Okay, so um, right now the fan is off um, at full speed with the fan. It's only 10 RPM slower, so that really doesn't slow it down very much. Um, uh, all I want to show here is um, basically I just made the gap just a little bit bigger, and it lets it breathe a little easier, and so it can actually get up to that faster speed by itself. Um, I messed with the uh, this just a little bit. Um, these are little bushings because these uh, collars are actually too big to fit inside that hole. So these little plastic bushings, about you know 50 cents a piece, can slip over and hit the bearing race. Then this can slide over and then push that. That way it's not going to move out. Uh, I just took them off for right now because the way this is all mounted and everything, um, this is not going to pull apart like that. You know, and even if you pull it apart, it'll just settle right back down like this. So that's not an issue. Um, the gap seems to be the main thing. It just had to be opened up just a little bit. Gets up to that speed. Uh, so I just want to show that and show the difference in the uh, uh, RPM. Because the fastest I was getting was about 250 RPM. Actually 248. And when I did this, it's up to about 275. Uh, this is the input battery here. It's resting at 12.63, 12 12.64. 12 um, I've drawn from this battery let it drop, come back up, off and on a few times. So this is probably a little bit fluffy at the top. Um, it's probably going to settle down in this 12.2, 12.3 range. Uh, the output battery, this has been sitting for quite a few hours and it's at 12.77. Um, obviously this battery is charged, so I'm not trying to charge the battery. I just want to show uh, that this will speed up on its own without me having to flick it. And uh, we'll do a little RPM calculation. Okay, so let's see, make sure it's all hooked up here. Okay. Yeah, so you can see the double, little double triggering, and that smooths out as it gets up to speed. They're starting to come into speed there. And it's running quite a bit smoother. It's still got a little, little wobble there, but you can see that thing is really taking off pretty good. Still speeding up. Actually got it up to 100 cycles a second. So right now we're at about 93, 94, it's hitting 95. I did get it to like 100 to 103. Um, I think that's when the battery was a little bit more charged up on the front. You know, I've 12.27, you, know, you can see it's almost 15. So anyway, I'm just going to say 95 cycles a second. And so if we take 95 cycles a second, that's how many times... Um, an event is happening per second and if we multiply that by 60 seconds we're going to get 5700 cycles per minute and in one minute you know so if we take that and if we divide it by um, 21 magnets around the wheel because 21 cycles is uh, 1 RPM is 1 rotation okay so divided by 21 that's 271, and so that beats um, 248. So that's about 25 RPM, almost um, faster. So that's significant. You know, that's uh, it's going to have even a little bit less draw on the front, uh, a little bit more recovery, a little bit more mechanical because of faster speed. So I'd recommend just kind, you know, kind of play with the gap. Um, you want it close. You don't want it too close or to kind of bog it a little bit and if it's too far you're going to have to you know spin the heck out of that wheel to uh, get enough induction in there to even trigger it and if it's too far it's not going to get fast enough you're not you're going to lose too much mechanical so you're going to kind of play with the sweet spot there luckily on this particular kit you can uh, loosen these three bolts on both sides drop it down or up to adjust the gap exactly where you want it so you know, I'm within pretty much 
about where it's going to be the fastest. And I don't know, that might be about a third of an inch or something. But you can hear that, that little pulse there, do, 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 do. So it's spinning pretty good, but these are just slightly not perfectly straight. Um, so it'd be, you know, something else you can mess with. But in any case, just wanted to show you that it does speed up to that by itself without me having to flick it. It was a matter of opening the gap a little bit, and that was kind of the main thing. Um, but anyway, running pretty sweet there at uh, 95 cycles a second. You know, so where I got the scope basically is negative is on a primary negative, and I got the uh, probe on one of the transistor collectors. You know, that's the end of the wire that comes into the collector. So basically at the, you know, so-called bottom of the coil. Um, that's the waveform it's going to give me, and it's, in that event, is happening 95 times per second. So you got to calculate that by 60 seconds to get how many times it's happening in a minute, then divide it by how many magnets you got on the wheel, and that's going to tell you your RPM. So anyway... Okay, real quick, I put the fan on. I just want to show you the difference in the uh, RPM uh, with that on there. Um, run a little bit slower. I mean, I calculated earlier about 10 RPM different difference uh, with the fan so it doesn't slow it down significantly. And it, it, it is giving, um, you know, blowing air. That's just showing that it's doing some mechanical work besides just spinning the wheel. Slows it down a little bit. You don't want it to run you know, too, too fast, but, uh, anyway, this is in honor of the original bicycle wheel SG that John had built quite a few years ago. So anyway, uh, it's going to speed up a little bit slower and I'll just show the RPM. When you hear that, you know, it's, you spun it fast enough to induce enough to trigger it. That's the input battery. Fair enough. So you can hear it speeding up. It definitely speeds up slower because of the extra weight, but no, then it shifts gears. Single event per trigger. 82 cycles a second. Eighty-eight, eighty-nine, ninety. Things humming along pretty good. Yeah, you get a pretty good breeze there. About 91, almost 92. So we'll say 91.6. It's actually a little bit above that, but say 91.6. So 91.6 times 60. Divided by 21 magnets, yeah, 261, you know, so we're right there at about 10 RPM difference. Not really significant there. Twelve twenty-three. It's humming along pretty good. Actually, with the fan, it kind of damp dampens that uh, little asymmetrical pulse or that eccentricity. The do do do. I'll just leave the fan on, run it that way. So anyway, focus on the gap. 
raise it up and down you can find your sweet spot where it's going to be running the, the fastest and uh, coming up soon I'll clear all this stuff off I'll bring my laptop in the uh, uh, Western Mountain Radio um, manufactured uh, battery load tester where you can, we can actually put on the output battery draw a calculated load down at the C10 or C20 rate show it on a graph and everything so you know exactly what came out of it okay in terms of uh, watt hours so you can calculate the joules in versus joules out you can monitor the, the input battery and see the discharge graph on that uh, got some uh, tests that I've kind of mentioned for many years nobody ever took it serious or took me up on it but uh, uh, we're going to be demonstrating that and uh, not going to talk about it until till we do it once I'm satisfied that this is running how, it's, how I want it um, I also got to get bigger wires these are just real thin little junky alligator clip wires um, I want a wire at least probably about that thick connected to one of these with a good clamp to hook to the batteries because you want as low of uh, an impedance as possible probably not going to tell a big difference just on this like 15 watt type system or whatever but uh, um, I do want bigger cables than this I want real good connections so anyway that'd be the only other thing that I'd really do to this increase connections then I'll be showing some tests and um, we'll show some uh, what the reality is to this